Well, after another week of NFL action that, you know, went kind of crazy, let me tell you, um, we're on the week nine, and, yeah, some things have been happening. I know Deontay Johnson, you know, it's one of those things that's going to be happening. I believe he got traded today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, week eight, it it was a week that happened. Let me tell you, um, a couple things happened. Of course, you know, you know, Minnesota, Los Angeles, the Rams, the uh, the Rams, you know, have played inspiring football, and you know, the defense is able to finally get. Things over the top, Minnesota, you know, they had a couple quick drives, but the Rams were able to counter, you know, you know, I mean, this this Rams team, you know, is resilient, you know, with Cup and the Kua, you know, getting back into the lineup, you know, albeit very slowly, the Rams will slowly become the team that are supposed to be with Kyron Williams in the backfield, of course, leading the way. You know, Matthew Stafford, you know, not having to go too crazy, you know. And the Vikings have lost two straight, which is very concerning because they've lost the lead in the NFC North, which is very concerning. But, you know, things are going to keep going on. You know, things are going to keep happening. Um, Green Bay, they beat Jacksonville. It's a little closer than I thought, you know, but they beat Jacksonville. Tua Taka by lower returned. You know, and a bunch of guys, you know, started to finally look like the most selves, you know, against Arizona. But ultimately, there were a couple of mistakes Miami made late in Arizona, led by Kyler Murray, you know, going off for over 300 yards, were able to pick up the victory via field goal for Miami. And that drops Miami to two and five on the season. Arizona is at 500 and leads the NFC West. A crazy stat line to me. I mean, like, wow, 28 27, and you're telling me Arizona is in the front of the NFC West right now. You're you're kidding, right? But hey, the Cardinals, you know, they play scrappy football and they're playing the inspired football that is allowing them to win games, you know, that some teams just haven't been able to do. Um, the Jets, dysfunctional. What can you say? When you lose to Jacoby Brissett because Drake may left an injury, when you lose to Jacoby Brissett, you know you're cooked. Jameis Winston, on the other hand, we, we know he's not good. You know, he's been playing, you know, he, he looked like the guy that should have been the starter in the first place, you know. And, you know, he was able to go off through a long TD bomb to beat Baltimore. Baltimore was able to try and come back in the end, but ultimately could not come back in the end. And, you know, now Cleveland has their second one of the season. You know, Cleveland looked, looked pretty dark, you know, p- pretty grim at one point in the season. But now they have their second win there and they have a little bit of momentum on their side. A team that does not have any momentum on their side is the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, yes, Joe Burrow has been playing pretty, you know, pretty good football. Yes, Jamar Chase has been playing pretty good football. The running game is terrible, though. The defense has been arguably even worse. You know, T. Higgins is out, so Mike Busicki and Eric Hall, you know, have to step up, you know, so. But, again, that did not that did not help at all. You know, once Philadelphia was able to get going, because, again, Cincinnati had, you know, had the momentum at the beginning with a long TD drive that took over 10 minutes, but they ended up losing that momentum very quickly once Philadelphia got going, once Jalen Hurts, you know, started to get that offense rolling. Because, again, Cincinnati had stymied. You know, Philly at one point, but ultimately Philly was able to overcome and overpower Cincinnati to the point where it was just it was just rough to watch. You know, AJ Brown beating all over the top, you know, defense looking absolutely cooked. It was rough. You know, Saquon doing his thing. I mean, it's just a rough look for the Bengals right now. I do I don't think I expected them to be three and five. You know, I don't think I expect I don't think anybody did. You know, New Orleans is terrible. They lost yet again in a game that was at three. It was three to two at one point, but of course the Chargers pulled away. Houston was able to win against Indianapolis. No Stephon Diggs for the rest of the season, though, but they still have Joe Mixon in the backfield. Indianapolis, 
finally realized that AR5 is just not that guy. When you have a stat line of what, 12 or 31, that is terrible. You know, and I get it. And again, I've been saying this for like five years now. And let me get let me get to the crux of my argument here. I've been saying this for like five years now, just so let me just be real. None of these quarterbacks that we've been seeing over the last five, six years, you know, with the exception of very few, needed to be drafted the way they were drafted. There should not be four or five QB selections in the first round. I'm genuinely serious. There really should not be five or six QB selections in the first round. There shouldn't be like 12, you know, different QBs, 12 different QBs starting season after season after season now. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, it's an offensive line problem. And you're absolutely right. It is an offensive line problem. But it's also the fact that these quarterbacks are just not, they're just not, these quarterbacks are just not it. You know, you have, you have gifted guys like Jaden Daniels, you know, and Caleb Williams, you know, that have the talent that played all the years they needed in college to, you know, get to where they're supposed to be at. Michael Penix hasn't even appeared yet this year, but Drake May already got injured. You know, Bryce Young, failure. You know, there's others too. Spencer Rattler looked terrible. You know, he got benched for Jake Hayner, you know. It, it's like, what do you even do at this point? What do you even do? Will Levis, her, you know, makes it Rudolph at the start. And of course, you know, of course, you know, Jared Goff, you know, had a damn near perfect game again, by the way. He had a nearly perfect game yet again. But I mean, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs were able to run all over Tennessee anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Tampa Bay, of course, lost Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, you know. Mike Evans for just a couple of weeks, got one for the year. But they did have Kate Otten and Bucky Irvin, you know, in, in the backfield, you know, to kind of help things out. And maybe Rashad White, too, you know, at times. But ultimately, Atlanta was able to get the victory. You know, we're talking a Kyle Pitts explosion in the first half. He didn't do anything in the second half. But a Kyle Pitts explosion in the first half. Now, he almost messed up in the first half. But, you know. Don't drop the ball, kids. You know, at the goal line. You know, or at least come, or at least come close to the goal line and drop it. You know, because it was ticky tacky to where he dropped it. At. But they ultimately ruled it a touchdown in the first place. But yeah, Tampa Bay is scrappy. Um, now the NFC South is probably going to come down to these two teams regardless. But if Tampa Bay can keep, you know, up playing the way they're playing, you know, yeah, Baker Mayfield got picked off a couple times, but. Again, the way they played, you know, isn't like it wasn't bad or anything. It wasn't terrible. But Tampa Bay, you know, is just going to have to improve that over the course of the next, you know, few weeks. And they got to keep it up. They got to keep it up. They're playing Kansas City on Monday night. You know, is that going to be enough with the way they've been playing? You know, the resources they have, is that going to be enough? Because um, Kansas City was able to beat Las Vegas and, you know, Comedy of errors for the Raiders, you know, in that game. I'm telling you, they had a safety, you know, you know, that, you know, should have been a safety, you know, and, you know, and then, I mean, it's just, it's just like, you know, they, they made some errors in this game, you know, Vegas, I don't know what it is, you know, they don't have anybody at this point, like Max Crosby wants to leave, Devontae Adams is gone, quarterbacks and Ridger, it's just rough. It's just rough for the Raiders, but I'm kind of going off on a tangent, you know, here. Uh, Buffalo took care of business against Seattle. I Again, I think this Seattle defense is pretty bad, and there's not much that we really can do to stop it because it's just bad. It's a bad defense. Carolina, also terrible. Bo Nix and company have been playing lights out. I don't know what it is that Bo Nix has been doing, but he's been playing pretty good football. You know, yeah, it's against NFC South teams, you know, the last couple of weeks. But, hey, Denver is 5-3. and three. Can't say that about some of these other teams, can you? I mean, San Francisco is barely 500. They continue to lose people to injuries. They continue to lose people to injuries. Jordan Mason got hurt, you know. you know. But, again, this is the Dallas Cowboys we're talking about here. My Dallas Cowboys we're talking about here. The incompetence level of Jerry Jones, Dak Prescott, Mike McCarthy, rest of the offense at an all-time high, you know. 
I mean, there was at one point where Cowboys had three timeouts. McCarthy uses all of them way before he needed to do. Um, there's plays where you're going to Jalen Tolbert on deep balls down the field. Inexplicable, you know. George Kittle cooking the Cowboys. I mean, it's just Debo when you know he was playing. You know, he he gets hurt like every other week at this point too. At this break, you know, also cooking. I mean, it's just like you just I just don't understand it. And then the Giants, the the Giants, one of the worst two point attempts or whatever that was, whatever that play was down at the goal line, one of the worst plays I think I've seen in quite some time. It was that bad. Pittsburgh, yeah, they were able to win. They were able to win. Um, you know, Russell Wilson, the company are, you know, they're, they're winning. What can you say? They're winning. But now we get on to week nine and week nine, you know, we're starting to, we're still starting to separate a little bit, you know, from the rest of the pack, you know, some teams are looking really, really good. Others, not so much. Others, not so much. Um, so. Can Jameis Winston and the Cleveland Browns do it again? They're playing the Chargers this week, and they do it again. Can they win again? You know, the Bengals and the Cowboys, they got to try and save their season. The Cowboys are playing the Falcons. The Bengals are um, they're, they're, they are playing the uh, – uh, who are the Bengals playing? Who are the Bengals playing this week? They're playing the Raiders. They got to try and save their seasons. I think both teams need to save their seasons. Cowboys, maybe more so. The Bengals, if they can take care of business against the Raiders, they're in good position. But the Cowboys, definitely more so. Um, beating the beating the Raiders is not going to solve the Bengals' problems, though. I don't think that's going to solve the, the Bengals' problems. Broncos Ravens is going to be one of those games this week to look out for. Same with Bears Cardinals. Again, that's a key game in the NFC um, because well. We need to talk about the craziest Hail Mary of all time, you know, before we even, you know, go into some of these other games. The craziest Hail Mary of all time, you know, Jaden Daniels with the completion of a lifetime somehow. And, I mean, it got tipped by Chicago, but the Bears, you know, who looked terrible the entire game, I'm telling you, that defense had Caleb Williams seeing ghosts, you know. But yet the Bears were able to counter and get – back into the game, but again, the Hail Mary at the end is what we're all going to be talking about for maybe even years to come because that was insane. You know, it was like that Georgia-Auburn game from like 2015. Just insane stuff, man. It was crazy. Like, how? How does this even happen? You know, Washington still in control of the NFC East, technically. Um, so, yeah, the Bears and the Cardinals are going to hook up this week. In the game, you know, it's going to be buried in the regional window because, you know, the Lions-Packers game is this week, and that's going to be big. I mean, let me tell you, Jared Goff has been playing lights out. Jordan Love is playing lights out. You know, both these guys have been playing pretty good football. The Packers, you know, look, you know, pretty good at times. The Lions have looked absolutely fantastic. Again, looking like, you know, my preseason predictions are actually going through for once. You know, we're actually – you know, heading towards a collision course of a Lions Chiefs Super Bowl, you know, but I don't want to, I don't want to hold, I want to hold those predictions for another week. So give me a second and hold those predictions for one more week. Um, yeah, man, it's just like, wow, we're at the point. We're at the point in the season. And I just, I'm just like, wow, we're really there. We're really there, huh? Colts, Vikings, it's going to be Flacco versus Darnold which I don't think anybody expected those words to come out of anybody's mouth at any point during the season on Sunday night football. But, hey, it's going to be a dog fight in that game. You know, Vikings trying to avoid losing the third straight game. Colts looking to get back up 500. Rams, Seahawks, again, the NFC West is going to be a dog fight. At this point, you know, everybody's, you know, hovering either at or up. Under 500, barely under 500. Because again, some teams have played seven games, some teams have played eight, some teams have played six. So it'll all even out over the course of the, of the rest of the way. But yeah, Rams Seahawks is a big time game. You know, definitely if you're watching that game, you know, I'm going to be trying to tune into Bears, Cardinals, you know, and Lions, Packers, of course. I'm going to be trying to tune into those. Uh, and then the early window. 
you know, Cowboys, Falcons, obviously, I'm going to be watching my Cowboys. I don't care if we suck, you know. Uh, Tua, you know, hopefully he does not get hurt against the Bills. Again, Bills have been rumbling. You know, the Commanders have been rumbling. Saints, Panthers is a bad game. Jets should not be in prime time anymore. I'm expecting their game against Indianapolis in a couple weeks to get flexed out of prime time. I'm expecting, I think that's what we're all expecting at this point. Patriots, Titans is a game that's going to happen. Um, Jags, Eagles is a game that's going to happen. And then again, Bucks, Chiefs, the Chiefs, the only unbeaten taking on the Bucks. You know, Kareem Hunt has been playing absolutely fantastic. I mean, Patrick Mahomes has looked the greatest. You know, again, not the greatest, but hey, what can you say? Um, so, yeah, that's going to be week nine in a nutshell. You know, week nine is is going to be a, a weird week. You know, it starts tomorrow again. Houston takes on the New York Jets. Um, and then Sunday we got all sorts of action leading into the Monday night matchup, which should be a good one, you know. So, the NFL this week, I'm expecting more craziness like this week was because, again, that Hail Mary was just absolutely Insane to look at. Like, wow, bruh, wow. So, yeah. Next time I talk to you all, it will be on Sunday night. It will be Sunday night, you know, as far as the NFL goes. So, it's going to be an interesting, you know, Sunday of conversation because there's going to be some college basketball to talk about, you know, some, just some preseason predictions, you know, just, some, just a little bit of preseason predictions, and then, you know, some NBA as well. You know, kind of need to talk about the first couple weeks of NBA action. You know, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let y'all get all up out of here, and we're gonna talk some, you know, some football and stuff like that. You know, and some basketball and everything like that. You know, over the next couple weeks, and then you know, things need to go from there. So yeah, I'm gonna get on up out of here, and I'm gonna see y'all later.